I'm just checking thermals. Victory! This was labeled as the fastest gaming laptop the world saw in 2021. A lot of reviewers seemed to like it, and so I was really itching to get my hands on one. If you guys are OG followers, you all know we've been pretty crazy about our gaming situation in the studio. In fact, so crazy that we've decided that we will take this whole wall to build a dual desk setup for gaming. It's a video that will be coming in the future, so make sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Look, essentially, I've been sort of quite happy with the new 12th gen CPUs, so I've been wondering what sort of power the GE76 Raider can deliver. It's essentially a monstrosity packed with insane specs that made us wonder, can this just replace a custom gaming PC? This isn't something you buy to bring around with you every day. In fact, it's huge and weighs around 6.4 pounds. It just doesn't fit in a bag as well as something like the MSI Stealth. This obviously made me wonder why in the world is this so big? And so the first thing that came in my mind was cooling. Obviously, the question that arises from that is if I want to play hard, what sort of thermals am I going to get? When I opened this up for the first time, I noticed a sheer amount of copper heat pipes properly aligned with dual fans to dissipate heat towards the sides. Everything rests towards the top where the CPU and the GPU lie on the motherboard. Just note there is a bit more piping towards the GPU side. Of course, with size comes more responsibility, right? Which means that we have this massive massive 99 watt hour battery at the bottom of the chassis. I guess it explains why it comes with this 280 watt power brick which is huge. So because there's so much room within this chassis it was probably so easy for them to keep the RAM, Wi-Fi 6 e-card and M.2 slots at the bottom of the motherboard. However if you want to upgrade your RAM to maybe something like 64 gigabytes well I'm quite bummed out that it is not possible. I don't get why they made it so impossible to do so. However upgrade Upgrading the NVMe SSD is possible in case you need more storage for games and you can also add a second unit. All of it comes together super nicely and I've realized that while gaming, the fans do take a while to kick off. But as the CPU clock speeds go up and temperatures start to rise, it does get super loud over time. Now, the G76 is not only big because of all of those things, in fact, it's also big because of its 17 inch screen. Opening the whole laptop with one hand is still easy. Hinch is nice and stiff, but because of the size of the panel, it's not very sturdy and it shakes quite a lot when playing games, although it really delivers a great screen resolution. I will say though, the bottom bezel of the display does feel a bit cheap. The laptop itself does deliver three different resolutions, but I happen to have a 1080p model. You can always opt for a 2K or 4K panel if you don't mind dropping the refresh rates. Mine isn't really the brightest panel at 350 nits, not that it really matters because the recommended brightness setting for gamers lays around 250 to 350 nits. The interesting feature though is that it offers an overdrive feature through MSI Center software. Essentially, it allows you to push the monitor's response time speed in order to reduce the ghosting of fast moving objects. It's been said that it delivers a 3 millisecond response time with this mode, although you can experience a tiny bit of overshoot. MSI Center, for those who are not aware, is actually really cool to use. It's the software that allows you to monitor your computer, install features like noise cancellation, and simply adjust the laptop performance with their features tab. It's really nice honestly and works well with the game bar in case you want to monitor the computer status while you're playing. Backlight bleed by the way is non-existent. When games are loading and things are super dark it really doesn't affect your experience. I think it's overall one of the greatest 250Hz gaming laptop displays I've tried in a while. Despite having thin bezels and packing up a 1080p camera on top, truthfully and honestly this isn't the best camera and I'm also not a fan of the mics either, but, but I will say 
that if I toggle the fans at full speed, it does a pretty good job at isolating that noise sound. I can't say the same for the keyboard strokes though. You see, MSI and Steel Series keep partnering up to produce the best keyboards on gaming laptops, and this here is the closest feel you'll get to a mechanical keyboard on a portable machine. The strokes are just so right, yielding great travel, the keys are big enough, font is awesome, and the sound is great. Of course, like always, I am a big fan of MSI's function keys, super practical for gamers. It also yields four different levels of brightness for the keyboard, but I mostly like their full blast fan function key right here. It's just nice to have. The only thing I hate is the size of the right shift key. It's a bit awkward to press, but doesn't affect my gaming experience at all. Trackpad, like always, I'm not quite sure why they always keep making these small to medium sized trackpads. I always feel like I'm running out of room, but other than that, it feels exactly the same as the other trackpads on their other models. One thing I can say though is that the base plate is a complete fingerprint magnet. It's a nice matte metal material, however, just keep a microfiber cloth around. These, by the way, are speaker grills, they sound fine, but the thing is that the fans on this eventually get so loud that you can't hear all that much. Anyways, speakers for me are not a priority since I often find myself using headphones for gaming and most of the time I tend to connect them through an audio interface. The ports for gamers on this are absolutely great, with a couple of USB-A ports on the right, an SD card slot in between them, a 3.5mm jack with a USB-C 3.1 port and a USB-A port on the left. This gives you enough room on the side to add to the main ports panel. And I say main because my favorite hardware feature is the fact that you can keep your desk clean. Yeah ports on the back of a laptop and on top of that it has an ethernet connection, which is perfect for us. Power connector sits here next to their HDMI port, a Thunderbolt 4 port and thankfully a mini display port. DisplayPort is most useful for us gamers because it can connect from a monitor to a dedicated GPU to support higher resolutions, higher refresh rates, and more bandwidth than HDMI. Like for example, FreeSync on my LG monitor works only when connected with a DisplayPort. This as a whole, hardware-wise, is well packed up. The chassis is mostly metal, it has this light bluish gray tone to it, metal everywhere except the bottom portion, which is plastic. I hate it, but I also think it was essential to make it super easy to open. I think the most impressive feature about it all is the glowing strip they have below. It's not much of a strip to be honest, it reminds me a bit of my wall light blocks. It's like a full RGB block protected by this black tinted plastic. It's actually quite amazing because at first you would never imagine that this part of the laptop can glow up. I'm also happy to know that this isn't part of the bottom panel when disassembling it. I could only imagine how catastrophic that would be. Honestly speaking though, overall, it's very much a gaming laptop on the outside. The inside, however, no, I'm joking. The inside and the performance of this thing are both phenomenal. I mean, it's an i7 12700H CPU coupled with an RTX 3070 Ti. I've personally never tried a gaming laptop like this in the past. The CPU and the GPU both combined are incredibly fast. The numbers this thing yields in extreme performance are honestly very impressive. I mean, the fire strike and time spy numbers are actually insane. Last year, under vaulting this laptop to effectively boost performance was possible. I did install Intel's extreme tuning utility since our processor was supposed to be compatible with it. I did a stress test for 10 minutes to obtain some base level numbers and there were quite a few interesting observations like thermal throttle and power throttle. But sadly, after digging a bit through the BIOS, I eventually found out that pushing the CPU on this machine was just not possible. I was kind of bummed out because from the nights we've been gaming on it, it's been making me want to push this machine like crazy. Regardless, it's an outstanding piece of machine and whatever you decide to throw at it, it'll handle it super well. With its default settings, you can easily play Valorant, Rainbow Six Siege, GTA, Warzone, and pretty much any AAA game out there without lag. In my opinion, if you want something that yields great performance, no matter its size, this is it. This is legit one of the best gaming laptops you can buy, and I very much recommend giving one a try. This is my review unit, although I've been begging MSI to let me keep it for longer. It would make a great feature on our gaming dual desk setup video. I hope you guys liked the video by the way. Like and subscribe if you did. I'll see you guys soon around on Instagram and TikTok with some behind the scenes content. Talk soon. Take care.